Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Mark Cohen here. We are in the detail part. If you've been following along on the lettering part, um, probably you will notice probably one of my bigger mistakes. When I come back, I'll tell you what happened. All right, welcome back. So we took the vinyl off. When we're taking the vinyl off, the vinyl come off very, very hard. Uh, I left it on too many days. I think it was for two days I left it on. Typically, as soon as I put the red base coat over the vinyl, I take it off. Well, in this case, I got interrupted with something, and it was the next day before I took it off, and it come off really really tough it come off it did all right but every time I tried to get in there to to get it up I dug into it so we're gonna show how to fix if you get a couple of those little nicks uh, how to fix that so I'm gonna turn the camera around here we got a couple of letters here that uh, have a couple of little things here I'll show you kind of what happens so I'll get a little closer here so you can see it as you can see when I'm pulling up the vinyl I'm trying to get an edge started and that base coat underneath there real soft and sensitive until it gets a clear coat put on it. Works great in the environment, but I kind of push the the product a little probably a little harder than I should have. You need to get the base on there and get that vinyl off for sure the next day. My apologies for this, but I think it's good to show what you can do if you're getting a couple little spots like this. So I'm going to show how to how to do a little bit of repair, how I clean those up. I'll usually, and you don't, you don't have to do this, uh, but if you want to keep that straight line, keep you a straight line on that white. And in this particular case, I think I could have dabbed, went in there and dabbed up on this one and not ever touch that line but just in case like i missed it just a little bit there i want to get right on that line so it stays nice and clean that's a little better we're going to do this l2 i don't know if you can see that in the camera eh, not too bad so Obviously, I, I let it set up a night after getting all that off. I probably will try to get my clear coat on tonight. Don't have to. I've got a little bit of a window there. I use the same base coat. I mixed up a little batch. Some people might use a, a pinstriping brush. I kind of like using these little dab. They call them dabbers, little touch-up dabbers. Uh, made by Fastline. You can get them through the Napa, Napa Auto Parts system. Uh, part number is an FDAB. Uh, they come 40 in a box. They're not that expensive. It's got a little, just a kind of a little cotton uh, ball on the end. And you can go in there. And if you're just trying to do a little nick, it works really good. Obviously, if you're going to do a complete letter, I would not suggest this. Go right back to your pinstriping brush. But we're going to clean up like a little edge like this one here. And it's literally, I see a little bit right here I'm going to get. A little, little mark there, a little edge right here. But literally, it's that quick. Get this other little spot here. This one here, I want to get a little bit straighter. Where your line kind of comes into play. If you mess up this a little bit, you can come back in with some red and clean that up. But sometimes I'll put a, a little bit, if it looks like I don't have good, great coverage, if you put too much on, sometimes it, it gets a little bulky. I'll show you what, uh, we're gonna do another correction up here. And I think we talked about this in the video. It really come out really good. Uh, I've corrected 
a little bit of touch-ups on, on this side. We're going to do one on the D. We talked about this in the earlier video. When I put the vinyl down, I could tell just not the where I wanted it to be. And you can see it kind of rolled up about right there. Basically, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a little bit of tape down. So we're going to try to make just a straight line. We're going to leave this line pretty well straight. We're going to try to just follow where our tape line is at here. And you can get all the little detail you want at this point. Clean up some edges. I try to spend a little bit of time because I really like the straightness, the good lines. And I found once you put the clear on, it shadows a, a lot of the stuff that you think, oh, look at that, look at that. And you know, some of this stuff will really look good once the clear coat gets on there. So we'll let that dry just a little bit. I think I'll give it one more hit. Let that dry, just some base coat dries fairly quick. I'm using, uh, this actually the Crossfire base coat uh, through Martin Senior. Okay, like I say, if you don't like your correction, you can always come back in and retouch it up with some red. I like to keep that straight line on there. Just like that. See if that's looking good on the camera here. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. So that is a way you can kind of clean up some lines. Let's go back to our L and the D here. We'll put one more coat on it. Actually looks pretty good. Give it one more little touch up here. Pulling this off wet right now, just so you can see it. And there we go. Okay, so once you get your lettering, the best you can get it. Get it the best you can get it, because once you put that clear coat on, there's no turning around. Get everything is the best you can do it. Uh, our next step, uh, we're going to basically let this dry. And then maybe tomorrow evening, we'll uh, come in and put uh, probably two to three coats down. Okay, first coat of clear is on. Actually, I kind of I did a wet on wet, so there's really two. Two coats right now. We'll come back after this flashes. We'll give it its last coat, but see what I mean about that lettering? Ooh. It is just extremely, extremely, extremely good. I really like it. A little bit of detail, a little bit of time makes a big difference. So Give you a shot of it here while uh, we're in between coats. Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Just finished the paint. I'm gonna give a little bit of basics tonight, what I do to try to get that glass, glass look. Uh, right now, I've got two to three coats of, uh, of uh, clear coat on there now. I have already went in and done 1500 on a DA pad, 1500 on a DA pad, a little bit wet when I, when I do that. And now I'm gonna do the 3000 grit, uh, just kind of give you an idea of kind of where I, where I go with the buffing. So hang on, I'm gonna grab some equipment and I'll be right back. All right, we're gonna get started with the 3000 on a DA sander. The 3000 is very, very fine. Can you get too aggressive with it? Yes, I try to always do it wet, but it's just a little foam pad that sticks onto your, to the hook it back it. 
the 3000 grit, it lays down, it lays that clear coat really, really smooth. So I'm gonna give you a couple of little things here and we'll show you how it works. I always missed a little bit of water on there just to kind of keep things a uh, little bit of lubrication. Do a panel at a time. Stop at times, check your pad. If there's any little thing that's getting attached to that pad, you need to make sure it stays clean. If you leave that on there, it will put those little squiggly marks in there. I call them a half hook. Uh, so make sure that stays off there, but keep it, always keep a little bit wet when you're doing it. When you're getting to the edges, stay off the edges as much as possible. When you get close to an edge like that, you got a chance of burning through really quick. Uh, yes, I've done it. <laughs> oh. If you're doing an edge like that, just stay off of that, keep it flat. Uh, I kind of oh. tip my pad up just a little bit, but I try to keep it pretty well as oh. as possible. We're going to wipe that down. And this is a time you want to look. A little dust nibs. Any little bit of hair that might have got into that clear coat. In my case, a gnat or a... I've had June bugs. <laughs> usually don't get those sanded out very good but uh you can get quite a bit if you're if you're putting two to three coats down suggest always doing three if you're going to come back and do a buff like this to get that glass look uh you really need to be you can do it with two coats you're just taking a chance of buffing through that clear coat and you're going to be rescuffing and reshooting it which probably if many painters out there they're all saying yep been there done that so tonight i'm just kind of work this area here i may even come around here and uh work around the coca-cola i'll get this uh camera a little closer here so you can take a look at it i'm waiting to see the difference the clear did really good over the Coca-Cola, very detailed. Hopefully everybody uh, has had a chance to see the, when we pulled the vinyl off and did the lettering, that's a probably a segment of its own. We'll see how this one matches up, but we'll get the buffer out now. I like using a wool pad. Um, it just seems to cut for me better. Some people like using a sponge pad, uh, using a 3M pad, dual sided, quick release, so you can pop it off and on. Works really nice. I got several that I use. We're gonna do a section at a time here so you can kind of see uh, where the clear coat is going. We'll buff it from this side here. Get a little bit of an angle here so you can see what I'm doing. I tend to put my product down. I know everybody's got their way of doing it. I like putting it on 
And I like to mix my sections at a time. Once again, stay off the edges. Uh, do those by hand. You can control a little bit better. But we'll, uh, we'll do this first section here. Use that first time. I like to get my pad a little bit saturated. While you're buffing, if you feel your your pad is kind of grabbing, you may not have enough product on there. So you always want to have it pretty saturated. That's why I like doing small areas at a time. But we'll continue here. This is really coming out very nicely. We'll go ahead and come up here around the lettering. Sometimes I'll switch to a sponge pad here for these tighter corners, but I'm gonna lightly hit it with this wool pad and then I'll jump into uh, my other pad to get around some of the corners, but it'll work pretty good if on this one. Just want to make sure we get all those little buff marks out. And get a little bit of a detail wipe down here. Take a look at that. That was, uh, might as well say three passes. We'll just call it three passes. We're still in the compound phase, and uh, but it's it's coming to life, coming to life real good. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick shot. We're gonna do a, a final glaze on it. I use the red pad, uh, Fendeli, uh, 33500. I use this as a final pad. Probably mirrors a lot of black pads that, uh, as far as stiffness, but it's very soft, very soft. But you can get a lot of detail buffing off this edge. Let me switch my pad out here right quick. Okay, so using a, a Vengeance product, I've uh, been using this product for probably 10 years. Um, <laughs> put it on pretty smoothly. Do a section at a time, once again, always do a section. Starting out with especially.
I like using this pad, especially in these little tight areas. You can get right in there. And usually, I mean, right when you, right when you start wiping it off, you exact, you feel exactly the way you want that paint to feel. It's just like a piece of glass. Unbelievable. Very, very slick. We'll go up here and finish in the upper section here. Get a little bit closer here. There we go. Looking really good. I've been asked, you know, how do you go over that lettering without it? I don't push very hard on the lettering. I, I, I go over it. That foam pad will go in there and clean some stuff up. But, uh, you know, obviously if this was hand lettered, probably couldn't get by with that. Uh, you got to realize I am putting two to three coats of clear over the top of my lettering. So that's where you're gonna get the, the glossy, glossy effect. Give you a little better shot here. But man, just beautiful. I just, just love this product. Vengeance makes a great line. Uh, I use their compounds. Uh, I jump, and, and, and by no means have they given me any product. I've used it for years. Uh, just kind of my go-to product. I you do use 3M. I use their pads. Uh, I jump in between, just see uh, what the uh, difference in products are. But, man, uh, to get a glaze like that, that's what people are looking for. But, uh, well, I don't want to take too much time on this video. I could spend all night buffing on a machine. But, uh, hey, thanks for stopping by. And, uh, wow, somebody told me 85 uh, subscribers. Thanks so much. Give us a thumbs up. If you like what you're seeing, uh, hopefully, hopefully the next video, we're going to get out of the paint stage here. Uh, but our next video, I'd like to start putting these back together and uh, making these a working machine but thanks so much for everybody viewing and uh, we'll see you on the next one thanks